Well, hello, Bomber fans, and welcome to the footy panel. Of course, coming to you from the Colonial Brewing Company here in Port Melbourne. Disappointing result yesterday, but with four games to go, the season very much alive in terms of finals footy. And Scotty, we thought with four weeks to go, we've got to go straight to the top and yes. get the coach in. John, thank you so much for your time. No worries at all. What was your final thoughts when your head hit the pillow last night about yesterday's game? Um, well, you still run through a lot of things, what ifs. Um, but ultimately, when I, when I really reflect on it, we played pretty good footy. Um, you know, it was against a very good team that uh, we're obviously playing. There's a lot of stake, both teams really trying to get that little edge on each other. Um, I thought it was a pretty exciting game of footy. Um, disappointed with some of the little errors we made, but I'm sure we capitalised on some errors that Luke Beveridge is probably saying, gee, we, left, we let them in there. So overall, uh, I thought the boys played a, a pretty solid game of footy, but just couldn't quite uh, head them in the end. The frustrating third quarter, though, when it appeared the team had opportunities to score, dominated possession for vast periods of time, but just couldn't convert. Yeah, and, and uh, it went down the other end, and I think seven goals won to the Bullies in that quarter. They were nailing all their shots, their long-range shots. Um, they, they really grabbed their opportunities. We didn't grab ours, so we, we went into that last quarter with a three-goal deficit, and um, that was going to make it tough, but... As we saw, we said to the players, you've got 30 minutes to, to just peg it back. It's not about trying to... Don't, don't panic if we haven't pegged it back in the first 10 minutes. Just play out the whole quarter. So uh, it took us a while to get there. We missed a few shots early again in the last quarter. Uh, but we got within a goal where it was game on. There was still three or four minutes to go. And uh, we gave ourselves a chance. And uh, unfortunately went forward. And I think uh, might have been the goal that Bontempelli got that put it back out to a two-goal margin and with a couple of minutes to go, which was going to be tough. Joe Danaher obviously had a great game, six goals, four, so you got the ball to him a lot. But is there a feeling he didn't capitalise enough on how dominant he was at times, tried to spot up a target instead of just get it in long and high and let him do his thing? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the exact answer for that. I haven't sort of gone back and looked at all our inside 50 entries. Um, Jules has. Yeah, there's, <laughs> a, there's probably always a couple. I think uh, even... Last week against North Melbourne, we were frustrated where we tried to hit up early inside 50 and, and uh, they were turned over. And once we started going long to hooker, um, you know, we were seeing the results. So we definitely, um, we absolutely understand that if we have to bomb the ball long inside 50, um, Danaher and hooker very rarely get outmarked. They either mark it themselves or they'll bring it to the ground. And, uh, but that doesn't take away from the fact if you've got a, a forward that's made a good lead and he's got uh, a split on his opponent, that you should still hit him up and give him an, an easy shot at goal. So there is a balance. Uh, but when someone like Joe is on fire that much, uh, I'm sure he attracts the boys' attention. What about the style of game? From, from a, I mean, a neutral point of view, it was a great game of footy. It was quick. It was high scoring. But from, from your point of view, were you comfortable as a coach at you know, the style of that game or was it a little bit too open at times for how you'd like it to be? Well, I think uh, yeah, in the coach's box, the call came up that at maybe the 20-minute mark of the first quarter it was the first stoppage other than a centre bounce. So the game was going flat out. It wasn't getting bottled up. It wasn't getting clogged up. Both uh, well, We were scoring pretty well at that stage. So, yeah, it was a game that went... Uh, when one team had a bit of a flow on, they managed to score goals and um, then the other team would come back. Overall, yeah, I'm happy with that style of game. Um, I think we could have won that game if we had of, uh, probably just been a bit sharper with our ball use and decision making. I think we could have won that game. And uh, you know, are we happy winning 120 to 100? I'd take that. Um, as much as taking uh, an 85 to 65 point game, um, I like the exciting style of footy we're playing and it's working pretty well for us. How do you balance during the game, and we're talking about lost opportunities with uh, going inside forward 50, that's one side of the equation. The other side is, well, how do we stop them scoring? And how do you balance up when to fo what you're focusing on? Is that your assistance or is it a call on the game style that suits the team most and try and exploit that? Yeah, well, there's a lot that it, that it obviously relies on. Um, what you're looking at is... Uh, why are the opposition gaining momentum? What is it? And so we'll get some uh, conversations in the box going that's around uh, pressure around the ball. Mm. They're starting to get on top with the contested ball. Um, they've got the momentum in that area now. So we need to send the message out to our mids. You've got to step up mm. to the challenge now. Yeah. We need you for this next five or ten minutes to start uh, getting the job done as, as an inside player. Um, it may be through uncontested marks where they're controlling possession of the ball and we need to press up the ground higher and take away their loose players. So those things happen within a game, yeah, no doubt. They're, they're happening uh, 
you know, every five or ten minute block, you're working out whether you've got the momentum and why that's happening or whether they're in control. Mm. It was one of the frustrating parts yesterday that Tom Bell Chambers won the hit outs quite clearly, but the dogs won the clearances quite clearly. Where, where was the breakdown there? Yeah, that, uh, that is frustrating. And that's an area that we have to have a look at and um, be accountable to. Uh, we spoke about that post game where um, we felt there was a lot of uh, Tom's hits that got sharked by the opposition. That's either because they were hungrier and harder to get that front position. Um, and if that was the case, then that's something our, our players have to uh, step up and say, right, we're going to fight harder uh, from now on. We've learned a lesson from that, that you can't just rely on your ruckman winning the hit. You've still got to do the body work, uh, really commit yourself to winning and uh, front position so you can get at least first go at it, even if they, um, they wrap you up as you grab it. The prime example would be the Libba goal end of the third quarter, yep, yep. where Tom Bell Chambers a great hit. Is that Tom hitting to the wrong spot yeah. or the mids not getting it? Because that, I guess, sums up the question from Jules, doesn't it, about yeah. the mids getting to the right spot or as the ruckman? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so there the was obviously spot. a disconnect there somewhere. I haven't spoken to them specifically about that as mm. yet. But it's obviously one that uh, th- that midfield group will work through. Um, you uh, you don't want to put the ball in a perfect spot for uh, for an opposition to win it and kick a goal. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure whether th- those boys will work it, work out, it out and talk through it. Whether they uh, they misheard Tommy's call, uh, whether they they got blocked, they didn't get the balance right mm. to make sure they covered all the potential risky spots, but. Uh, obviously, where that ball went is the probably the highest risk spot if the opposition get yeah, their hands Yeah, that's where they want to get um, it to. Yeah, and the fact that we won it, mm. won the hit out, mm. uh, makes it um, you know, even tougher mm. to cope with. I was just looking at it. <laughs> Libba, left foot in. Yeah, it was, was a pretty was a easy tap. shot. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jason Johannesson's been a bit of a talk about his form yesterday, even on Talkback Radio this morning. And obviously, he's been tagged a lot lately, and, and he probably wasn't yesterday, but... I think I know the answer to this question because of the position he was playing. But what's your take when people say, why didn't the Bombers put more attention into Joe Hannison yesterday? Yeah, well, there was a. F- I would ask the question, why didn't the uh, Bulldogs put a little bit more attention to Joe Danaher? You know, hmm. I think um, if we said we'll go head-to-head Danaher versus Joe Hannison as forwards at either end, who wins that battle? Hmm. Yeah, I get, and that's, that was my point. He's playing forward, so he does yeah. have a direct opponent where if he's playing at half-back... He's had players really putting attention into him, so I guess that's the yeah, difference. Yeah, he, he beat mm. his opponents. Yeah. That, that's it in a nutshell. Mm. Um, good on him. He, he uh, his speed and, and his ability to f- convert and finish mm. his shots at goal. Some of them uh, on run from long range were, were outstanding. But you know, we've seen uh, Fantasia kick bags of five, mm. Tippin Woody's kicking four. Small forwards can mm. get away from you at yeah. times. Um, so uh, I would like to uh, you know let our supporters know. That there was plenty of work put into if Joe Hannison was playing off half back, and even for times he was going to be on the wing, we were very clear on how we were going to play him. Uh, so we were totally clear on that. He played forward, uh, and full credit that he's got the ability to um, to play forward or back and still impact games. But yeah, don't don't panic. We were well aware, and he was just too good. I'll rephrase it a little bit differently. It seemed that opposition teams had decided to target him physically. Yep. Uh, respect his uh, playing ability, but get inside a, his head and seem yeah. distracted. Yep. Does the team have a player that could have done that? Is it more a reflection of the team and the personnel within it? Because it does require a type of player. I yeah. can imagine yourself yeah, during your career yeah. terrorising him. Yep. But he, I don't think he was terrorised necessarily yesterday. No, no. Like James Kelly's had a fairly distinguished career. Yes. And but I'd, it's I'd a back... different type of player, isn't it? Uh, well... You know, it's interesting. You can a coach can demand a player go out and yeah. physically bump his yeah. opponent pre-game. Mm. Uh, you know, I've seen maybe yourself uh, or Matty Lloyd get physically bumped around by opponents. Yeah, still play well. Yeah, yeah, you no, know, no, I think. Yeah. So now the question is, can Joe Hannison deal with that constant physical uh, attention? Mm. Now maybe that's one of the reasons he's playing forward. But um, mm. you know, I'm still comfortable that uh, one part of our game we want to be is. Uh, you know, in terms of our team defence and the way we attack contests, we want to be pretty uncompromising. Mm. Uh, and that can look like it's physically um, aggressive when the ball's not around, or it can be physically mm. aggressive when the ball's mm. in your area, and it can be uh, mentally strong enough to concentrate mm. through the full length of the ground to, uh, game to beat your opponent. Mm. That's what we want to build within our group, not rely on uh, you know, one or two players that go out to... Um, you know, physically show 
I'm just trying to get in this guy's mm. head. But uh, if if we've got players that are comfortable playing that way and, and that and they can still perform well enough to say they're a, yes. they're going to help us be a great team, mm. then they'll be in our team. Mm. Well, boys, uh, that's the Bulldogs game uh, done, dusted. Uh, stick with us after the break. We'll put uh, your questions, Bobber fans, to the coach, John Morthold. <laughs> 